Welcome to Boomin' in the Booth for all things voiceover. Featuring your host, Ken Elliott. Welcome to the first episode of Boomin' in the Booth. I've got uh, Mike the Voice Monkey Christensen here. What's up, brother? Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me on the first episode. What? Number one. It's amazing. You got it. And it's this is the first time we've actually conversated not via email and text message, I think, too. I believe that's, yeah, that is that is true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how long have you been, because this podcast, for those that don't know, I still don't even know because I'm just kind of winging this, <laughs> um, voice acting, voiceover work, um, how long have you been doing this? I know we've been working together for a little while. We have. I started, uh, decided to get out of my day job in 2012 is when I started coaching and, and training and doing voiceover part-time. Um, I've been doing it full-time since 2016 and really putting a lot more effort into it over the last couple of years. So it depends on where I am and who I could talk to. It's like, I've almost had a decade of experience, but in actuality, it's actually been more than more like a couple of years where I've really hit it hard with marketing and putting a lot of effort into it. Right. Just round up anyway. It's, that's what I always do. Yeah. <laughs> when you say it's almost a decade, people go, oh, a decade. Whoa. That's a lot. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and what, like, what made you, what made you want to get into it? Well, I worked um, in veterinary medicine for a long time. I started working there in high school, and, you know, the original plan was to be a vet. Went through college, went through that whole thing, and did not get into vet school. And I didn't have a plan B or C or D or anything like that. So mm -hmm. when that kind of fell through, I said, oh, well, what do I do now? And, and I did some theater in college. I did some campus radio in college, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but for me, it was almost like if you don't go to a professional school or have that degree, then well, it's not a real job. It was more like, I could be a doctor one day. It's a doctor for animals, but I could still be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, thankfully, that didn't work out because I think I would have been absolutely miserable being a vet now. It's a, it's a bad profession to be in. Anyway, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of anxiety. You don't make any money. You're in a lot of debt. And for me, it just got to the point where I was just hating it. I was looking for an escape plan. Mm -hmm. And I've always enjoyed entertaining people and talking and I did voices and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And people would always do the usual, you have a great voice for the, you know, it's like fine. And I worked in radio for a little while here in Atlanta uh, from 2001 to 2006 or seven, somewhere around there, loved it. It was like, this is not a job. This is a lot of fun. So getting behind the microphone and, and enjoying that and just got to the point where I didn't want to go back to school necessarily for years for something. So I have a natural talent for this. So I ran down some people I used to work with who do voiceover training and coaching and demo production and started working with them. Mm -hmm found out that I'm pretty good at it. I really enjoy it. And here we are today. Awesome. Yeah, I can relate. I, I mean, I did, uh, I was an accountant for a while and that was the worst. And then, uh, that's what my wife does. Uh, bless her heart. I know she makes all the money in the family. Thank goodness. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like going from, and it's doing this is owning your own business too which I'm sure you are very familiar with. It's like you produce every dollar you get. You have to find it, track it down, do the work, turn it in. And some people, I mean, if you're going to get into this, put it that way, you got to keep that in mind. Um, that's what I always try to tell anybody interested in it. It's like you can do it for fun. You can do it for a hobby. But if you're going to try to make money at it, you know, it's it can be stressful, but it's a good kind of stress because the work is fun. And when you get out there and you land the client and whatever, it, it feels good. And then, of course, doing the job is a blast. So, It's a lot more work than you think it is. 
Absolutely. It's a lot more than just, hey, I'm just going to talk and read. It's just reading, right? It's just making a funny voice. It's just kind of, and no, for a long time, like I said, I didn't really put a lot of effort into it. Uh, my initial coach signed me up for voice one, two, three and said, audition here and mm. you will make enough money to live off of. And mm. I said, okay. So I was still working a full-time job. So it was, I would see auditions come up during the day and I couldn't get to them until I got home at night. And I'm sure a lot of tons of people can relate to that. Everybody has the, oh, yeah. the, the day job. So it was, yeah. And I would book a few things during the year and it made enough money to cover the, you know, definitely cover the cost of voice one, two, three, mm. but I never really got ahead because I wasn't doing any marketing. I wasn't actively looking for jobs. I was waiting for jobs to come to me via my voice one, two, three inbox. Mm. And once I started realizing and meeting more people in the industry and realizing, oh, no, 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 you have to be proactive. You have to go run down those leads. You have to make those relationships. You have to contact production houses and potential clients and and talk to people and learn stuff. And I went to VO Atlanta a couple of years ago and that really opened my eyes to just there were so many people there who were doing what I was doing and doing it a lot better than I was doing and you know in terms of performance and in terms of business and they knew so much more than me. That's when I realized like, okay, I really need to kick myself in the ass and get going and learn more about this. So started working with marketing people with like Corey Disson working, you know, branding and marketing and getting a website and getting and looking like a business and being more professional. Mm -hmm. If you look professional, people will hire you rather than just look at me. I've got a, a microphone I got on Amazon and I'm in my closet and my you know, I can send you my MP3 or something. So, right. you know, you have a website, you can host your demos and you, you look like a business and then you become a business. And mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm at now. That's awesome. Um, whenever you started initially, oh, you said theater. Mm -hmm. um, I notice on a lot of projects, there's a difference between voiceover and voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, people just getting into it sometimes don't know the difference and how do you think do you think your theater background helped you a lot um maybe a little bit i did mostly behind the scenes in mm -hmm. in acting um if anybody has seen me you know i'm not much of a on stage you know i've got the face for radio kind of thing so <laughs> it's my joke i was most yeah <laughs> i was mostly you know in the booth running the you know the soundboard or the light board or backstage manager i did act in a couple of things eh. but I, for me it's just kind of it almost comes naturally a little bit to me to, mm -hmm. the conversational read where I didn't suffer from the, when you're on radio, you've got the, come on down to the you know, announcer voice and, and you're, you're enunciating and you're projecting and you're going on and on. I've definitely got the conversational tone where it is acting. It's not just reading. Cause if you're just reading something off a piece of paper, it sounds like you're reading off a piece of paper. You need to mm -hmm. connect with the copy and connect with the person you're talking to. Always have somebody in mind. Yeah, when you're reading a script and with everything I've been doing for you, it's been, you know, a lot of the conversational, you're kind of thrown into a conversation in terms of, you know, you're interacting with other characters. So it can't sound like it, it's in a vacuum, right? You know, you're actually, you know, you think about what the other person has said to you and that's how it kind of molds your response to them. Yeah. Um, for those that do happen to turn into this podcast mike plays sheriff bill in star sheriff it's an audio comic book for river comics i That's play right. he probably doesn't even know it but i play his uh arch nemesis alexander <laughs> and uh we have a good time with that one and the, that uh mike does a great job he's a good hero and we see that's that's the beauty of doing this Guys like me and you can be heroes when the, when we got just you know the voice, we got the face for radio, but on on with our voices, you know, we can be uh, whoever we want, which is freaking awesome in my opinion. But 
I agree. It's it's been you know playing the villains also fun, but at oh, the same the time, <laughs> you know with with Star Sheriff on there, it's it's been a blast to to play him for what's it seventeen issues so far, and I think I don't know how many uh, they have released yet, but yeah, we're on like seventeen. I think I got eighteen about ready to go out. So yeah, and one of these days I have a what's that? Go ahead. I have a lot of fun doing it. It's, oh, it's uh. A- it's a blast. It is a blast. And one of these days, like, see, the way, you know, you know, but the way that we do it is I have to send out everybody their parts and whatnot, and everybody does it uh, on their own, and then we put it together. And one of these days, I hope to be able to do it like we're doing right now, video chat, and then go back and forth and record it, because I feel like that would just knock it out of the park. Like, it, everybody... And it's just the way it is, you know, when you're actually interacting as the characters, I think that it would just oh, it'd be so amazing. It's just so hard to coordinate sometimes. Yesterday I did one, 18 characters, I think. Whoa. And to coordinate that many people. <laughs> right. Is, right. Is daunting. But um, people's yeah. schedules are crazy now. And, and yeah. especially if. If you've got people that take longer to to get audio back or something, though, you know there yeah. might be certain people that are. You've got seventeen people together, and you've got that one guy who's his you schedule. Know, like, who knows well, what it is? Well, I got to do whatever, <laughs> and and you're like, okay, well, I guess we're. But yeah, I understand. It's it's something that it is always better to interact with somebody. Um, like I said, you got to have somebody in mind when you're either just reading a commercial or e-learning or even a character like we're Mm -hmm. doing that it's good to, you know, some people hang up a picture in their booth Mm -hmm. and they talk to that person. That's the person they talk to. They've got a person in mind or they, or they think about what the person said to them and that helps what they say, like I said, and to be able to have that with, you know, almost like a table read with a bunch of people Mm -hmm. doing it at the same time. That's the ideal situation. Yep. A lot of times, most of the time, you're not able to do that. Even with the big animated movies, you've got so and so comes in and records all his lines, and then you know this actress comes in and records all her lines, mm-hmm. and then it's the editor's job to put it all together and make it sound decent. So. And, and, and that's that's a it's a skill, and uh, it's harder than people would probably think. Because I mean, let's face it, most people probably go through. Unless you're in the voiceover, voice acting industry, your day, you don't even realize how many voiceovers you hear in a day. Oh, yeah. And, or, or I know some people that listen, they listen to audiobooks. They don't even think about somebody who's actually sitting down <laughs> and recording, reading that audiobook. It's just there. So it's funny. Like, um, I've, uh, do you do audiobooks? I've done a couple of children's books, mm-hmm. and I I don't like it to be honest. It's I don't have the patience for it. It's hard. There are people that can sit down and just read for hours, and for me, it's like no, nah, give me a thirty second commercial, mm-hmm. or give me you know a few lines of of whatever, and that's and that's okay. You know, I thought about this a few weeks ago where it was there are so many different genres of mm-hmm. voiceover. People yep. say, oh, you do voiceover. What is what is that? Do you do like cartoons? And yet, well, no. Anytime you hear a voice, mm-hmm. any commercial, any announcements you hear, any training videos you've done, if there's a voice and you don't see a person talking, that's voiceover. And they go, oh. And it is. It can get daunting when you first get into it or even now when I've been into it a while. It's like, oh, what about what about that? Oh, what about that? And you, you start getting distracted. Like, oh, I could do this. I could do this uh, thing. And you have to figure out what you're good at, focus on those, get great at those, and then kind of branch out. Mm-hmm. But, and there are things you won't be into. I'm not into audiobooks. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's not my thing. There's not a whole lot I'm not into, but audiobooks for me, it's just kind of a, you know, I know people that do them and they're fantastic at them and, and you know, more more power to them. It's just not for me. If somebody wants to come and pay me to do one, I'm, I probably won't turn them down. But I'm not actively on ACX or I'm not mm-hmm. auditioning for audiobooks. And they're tough. Just, they're tough. I mean, I've done oh. close to thirty of them, I think. And uh, every like, I, uh, it just takes me so long, especially if it's a book that I can't get into 
a relate. Mm-hmm. I should have probably said no. Um, right. Then it's like I I probably get some authors pissed off at me here and there, but <laughs> it's like why? Where's well, my I mean, book? I mean, it's like you make good it, money, but it takes time, and if you're good at it, it's going to be consistent work. Yeah. You're going to have you know people lining up or people like you get known as a as an audiobook author. I know a guy who does audiobooks and meditation work and it's that's all he does. That's mm-hmm. a lot not all he does, but that's a lot of what he does. And right. he'll I talked to him in you know July and he's like, "Well, I'm booked out through uh October That'd with nice. work." And it's like, "Oh, that's great." You know, in this business, there's not that guarantee of work. It's mm-hmm. wherever you if you don't put out the effort and you don't audition and you don't get out, you don't get work and you don't get paid. And yep. that's tough. So like, what would be your favorite niche? If, if, if you specialized in one area and that could keep you the bills paid and keep you happy, which one would you go with? Um, Probably in terms of uh, ease of, of doing it would be like promo work. Uh-huh. Because it's they're short and sweet, and you, you jump in the booth and you tonight on CBS, and then you often you often go. But I, gosh, I don't know. I like commercials. Um, I like helping create people create things, and um, I'm kind of getting into audio editing with music and effects. And you know, I like doing podcast intros. I like doing. Yeah, you know, there's really I don't really have a. Not a, favorite. a certain favorite. I, I like the character voices. Character voices are fun. Uh, it's a big difference between just making a different voice and actually making a character. Yes. Oh, yes. Where you could, you, your voice could just be elastic and you could go everywhere and make all kinds of weird noises and, and weird different voices. But if you, if it's just not believable in that character, people are going to be like, okay, he does a weird voice, but. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fit that character or something like that. Coming up with a voice for a character is is pretty tough, especially all the ones you send me. When you're like, "All right, we got these three guys, uh, <laughs> do three different voices for these three guys," and it's like, uh, uh, "All right." Now, uh, I always got to remind you, I could I could change the pitch and do some stuff to kind of give it a different sound too. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, but it but then but then you come back to me later and go, "Remember that guy you did like six months ago? I need you to do more." And I have to go back and listen to what I did. <laughs> Because I don't remember, I was like, what did I do for that? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I do the same thing myself because, like, you're so fast at getting stuff back to me. That's why I send you all these, oh, I got this guy right here, you know. Mm-hmm. I realized we missed this in the in the casting or something. Because it's just, a lot of times, if it's not a main character, it's just, what, a couple lines, you know. Right. And um, it's like, uh, crap. I didn't I didn't cast somebody for that. We've got everybody else's stuff here ready to go, but we're missing this one or two little parts. If I send it to you, I know I'm going to have it back in like if not the next 30 45 minutes, at least tomorrow. <laughs> like you A lot of times I'm actually on my computer when you send something to me and I'm like, well, I mean, wh- I'm I'm here, might as well go in there and do it. It's like I'm like I'm still like scratching my head looking at something else and then, "Oh, how's this? This sound good?" And I'm like, "Holy crap." What are you- you live in your booth or what? But yeah, and that, and that's all, that's why I send you those. Uh, I know it can be a pain in the butt, but like I have other people that, like I was talking to you earlier, sometimes takes a couple weeks. Some people I understand. They tell me ahead of time. They're like, "Hey, I'm working, you know, my full time job this many hours a week. You know, might be right. this weekend." But then some people they're beating down your door like, "Hey, I want to part. Hey, I want to part." And you send it to them, and you don't get it for two or three weeks, and it's just like. Did you really want the part? So Yeah, it's a bad first impression. And it's something to where normally when they want the voiceover, you're kind of at the end of the production uh, cycle. You've got it written. You've got it storyboarded. You may have it animated or you may have well, – it's a commercial. You, you've got the – and you just – we need the voiceover. Mm-hmm. Why make them wait? If you, if you can do it, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're out of town or if you're at work or – there are circumstances, but in those cases, you need to communicate and say, hey, here's what's going on. I'm doing this. I'm at work. I'm with my family. I'm, it's midnight, whatever it is. I'll get it to you as soon as I can. As long as you communicate, you're fine. But if you if you can do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, having a reputation of getting audio back fast is not necessarily a bad thing. It's 
Not at all. No. As long as it's good. Yeah. If it's if it's garbage, you send garbage back then super wait fast. A bit. Then, then wait a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. If you need if you need if it takes you a little bit longer to absorb a script and and actually produce a good product, uh, then yeah, maybe you know give it a few hours. That's something I've had to learn in my career to where it's you. I get an audition in and it's like I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Go 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 go. And you don't necessarily produce the best thing with that. You know, talk to some people about it. You know, mark up the script, digest the script, live with it for a little while, and then. You know, if you're waiting a few hours before you, it doesn't have to be within the next 10 minutes, you send it back to your agent or uh, whoever sends you an audition. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's whenever I get something, I have to get it off my plate. I hate having things hanging over me. And, Piling and, up and... You know, if you if you get a job like, hey, you know, Ken needs this, you know, cop voiced or whatever it is. Well, I'm not. He doesn't know I'm not doing anything, but right. <laughs> I know that I'm like, well, let me just finish this TV show before I go in. No, go in there and do it. And then you've got it off your plate and you've got a clear conscience and and you look awesome. So yeah, it, nothing wrong with that. I mean, definitely um, for the stuff that I work on, I can I definitely have the list in my head of who I can rely on. Like whenever you've done it, we've been doing this for what, a year and a half, two years? Something like that, yeah. And um, it's like at, at this point, I know if I need a, a a guy voice that can fall in this range, I got Mike and XXX. If I need a woman, I got I know that these two will get it back to me quick, you know. And uh, that's the impression you want to give with everybody. That's what I try to do. Uh, we're not always perfect, of course, but um, no reputation is everything, though. Yeah, if you. If you do a great job, that can get you pretty far. Mm -hmm. If you do a great job and you're a pain in the ass, people, engineers don't have time for that. There right. are so many people doing voiceover right now. So many. That because of the pandemic and because people are at home in their home studios uh, or start, you know, getting it and building a home studio, technology is to the point now where you can feasibly you know, do this pretty easily, there's always that next person in line. Oh yeah. There's always that thing. I've I've always been told, don't be a diva. Why why be a diva? Yeah. When somebody sends you an audition or a part, the last thing you want to do is go, Ugh, oh all right, God, it's, all right, fine, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. No, you want to be excited about it because you chances are you're dealing with the creator or dealing with Somebody who had a creative hand in it, and as artists, we're all sensitive. We all know that when you've got something that's your baby, it's your commercial, and you give it to somebody and they smack it down, that makes you feel terrible. And if somebody is excited about it, oh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And then you send them a thank you card or you send them a Christmas present or you do something along those lines. People remember that. People remember the good things, and they also remember the bad things. And the bad things travel faster than the good things do. I, I remember the uh, the little voice monkey bottle opener I got for Christmas from you last year, <laughs> which is still in use. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I remember that. It, it, it works. definitely works. Um, yeah. And then you touched on, like, so many people getting into it now because of the pandemic. I've noticed that. Uh, in the last year, how many on, you know, some of the voiceover Facebook groups and other forums, like how many new people are popping up and, um, what, when you started, um, what was your home set up like whenever you first ventured? Into oh this? boy. Um, I had a blue Yeti microphone, mm -hmm. my USB microphone. I was in my closet at my old house and that closet actually was a pretty good size. The closet I'm in now in, in my you know newer house uh, is much bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but the old house had a lot of clothes in it and I could had a nice shelf. I could set the microphone on it and I would print out all my scripts. So I'd have these huge piles of paper everywhere in the closet. It drove my wife crazy. <laughs> and I would, I was, yeah, I would have my, my laptop was down next to the to the uh, microphone, so of course there's you know fan noise from the laptop sometimes, and I would you know sit in there and I would edit and do my little do my stuff in my closet, and I was like that for three years, mm -hmm. you know, and I booked work through there, and I did 
work and I did fine. Moving to this house um, was a little bit different. The closet that I was going to be in, the space that was probably the best in this house, you know, is our master closet, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like, well, now I got echo and bounce and everything like that. So I had to trial and error, YouTube videos, figure stuff out. And eventually I was able to build my uh, booth that I'm in now, mm -hmm. um, you know, get my acoustic blankets and got, went through a couple different microphones and, you know, finally, you know, have the one I have now and I got my nice little booth and I'm in, it's like a five by five ish booth and, uh, built it out of PVC and, and, uh, it was you, YouTube, YouTube is a great thing. Oh, I you, so you're watching videos on how to make <laughs> stuff and you just do it and you and you record it you make friends in the industry who are audio engineers and you record stuff and you send it to them and you go tell me what this sounds like does it sound okay and you keep futzing with it until they come back and go it sounds awesome mm -hmm. and then you go i'm not going to mess with it anymore yeah <laughs> we have a tendency to tinker if we're not working or oh, you know I'm... maybe we're not getting as many emails let me um let me get a new microphone or, or no, 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 let me adjust this or I need a new booth or I need to, uh, you know, tinker or I need a new piece of equipment and just, just stop. If you got something good, leave it alone. I know. And it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I rearranged my booth <laughs> last week, I think, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it wasn't so much boredom or whatever. It was just like, I want to be more comfortable. Like the way I had it. I'm doing, I have, I just finished an audio book a week or two ago. I'm working on another one. And the way I had it set up was great for character voicing and stuff like that. But I wasn't comfortable sitting down reading for a long period of time. So I moved some stuff hmm. around and tinkered with some stuff. And, um, I think I, I don't think I affected my sound any, but yeah, it's like, there's just times when you're like, I'm going to mess with something. <laughs> I got to change something or whatever and yeah i've had it happen in the past where it didn't work out very well back yeah, in a lot of times it makes it worse and a lot yeah. of times then you're trying to figure out well how did i how did i have it before and you try to start messing with it and yeah i mean i haven't you know you don't need to spend a lot of money but you need to spend money smartly mm -hmm. to make because it doesn't matter what kind of microphone you have it doesn't matter what kind of interface or what kind of DAW you have or anything like that. If your recording space is terrible, it's always going to sound terrible. Yep. You know, the best microphone in the world sounds like crap in your bathroom. So treat your space. Number one, treat your space. Now it's super quiet in my closet. I've had people come in and, and come into the closet and go, it's so quiet in here. I'm like, I know I haven't, it was kind of naturally that way, but so then I had to kind of, enclose a space mm. inside the closet to make it to where it's uh you know a little more you know it sounds a little bit better my wife wasn't happy about it um i had built the <laughs> i had built the pvc frame out in the in the driveway because i have more room mm. um got it labeled each piece which is important because you're going to take it apart and bring it upstairs brought it up here put it together it was too big so i have a little ratcheting PVC pipe cutter, which I completely recommend if you're going to build a oh, PVC yeah. booth. It, no sawing. You just go and it cuts the pipe. It's fantastic. So I was able to adjust it, hung the blankets on it. And my poor wife walked in the closet was like, what the hell? It is it's like, I didn't think it was going to be that huge. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm a big guy and, you know, I, I needed room because I don't be smacking the walls if I'm gesturing and, and things like that. And she wasn't thrilled about it, but she's still got half the closet for her clothes. So she's, I think she's, it's been a few years. She's, I think, uh, gotten used to it at this point, but, uh, <laughs> she's still not enamored with it, but she likes it when it makes money. So, yeah, that's always, that's always something that changes people's minds. It's like, mm -hmm. look at this check or this deposit. <laughs> yeah. I earned that and that monstrosity in our closet. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh let's see what else did i want to ask you if i can remember you got any favorite voices 
that you'd like, like to voices do. I do or voices that I've you know heard either people either do. or I'll let you answer that question. I mean, I grew up Saturday morning cartoons mm-hmm. with everybody with Scooby Doo and and all those people that would do the voice. You know, grew up with Frank Welker, um, who does a zillion voices. You know, shows like Futurama, Billy West, all those guys that would you know the Simpsons people that. It's 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 certainly mind blowing when you first find out that one person does all these different characters. Uh huh. And you're like, oh man, I didn't know Hank Azaria did seventeen different people, and <laughs> and they're all different and they're all unique. And and then there's some people on the show that do like one, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to do a zillion characters. But yeah, I grew up idolizing all those guys, um, watching YouTube and seeing people like John Bailey with the epic you know, movie epic voice guy with the honest trailers and uh, the how it should have ended people um, out in Texas who do the, how Marvel movies should have ended, different movies should have ended. It's all animated mm-hmm. and they imitate the the superheroes. And, you know, I keep emailing them like, hey, can I do something for you? But, uh, you know, nothing so far, but uh, stuff on. like that. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who has talent and it can do, you know, impressionists always you know, imp- impress me, I guess you could say, uh, but how they can, if they're really good mm-hmm. and you, they, they come up with a celebrity and you're like, that is like a voice match. Like, I, 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 even, I can't do that. So I don't even try celebrity voices anymore. No, <laughs> it, I, I, I do impressions. I do bad impressions and that's, people, that's what I go as long as people impression. know who it is, yeah. then I would say it's successful. I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to sound just like Morgan Freeman or, Arnold Schwarzenegger or whoever, but it, you know, you invoke them a little bit, and people oh, yeah. go, "Oh yeah, you know." And every now and then, I'll do something, and somebody will go, "Oh, that sounds, that sounds just like it." And you go, "Oh, oh okay," <laughs> and you know, it's, you just kind of put it a feather in your cap and keep going. I mean, that's such a small part of this business. Oh yeah, that people say, "Oh, can you do, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger?" And you're like, the la vista, baby," and they're like, "Oh yeah," like, "Well, you can't make any money doing that." You know, there's people out there that do it much better than than I do, and and it's yeah. You think about everything that needs a voice, and chances are it's going to be your voice. Yep. Because nobody sounds like you, and be you. Don't try to come in here and go waka waka. I'm going crazy voices. <laughs> no, just most of most of the voiceover work is yourself, and True, variations yeah. of yourself. I remember um, <laughs> Howie Mandel had a special. In the, I want to say eighty nine or ninety ish, how he would, mm-hmm. and I probably should not have been watching it at the age I was whenever that came out, but it was one of my favorite uh, favorite stand ups I've ever seen. Still, and at one point he was talking about um, he does the voice for Bobby from Bobby's World. Mm-hmm. He did the voice from um, B. Who was one of the Muppet Babies, not Beaker, but the other one. And then uh, uh, Gizmo and Gremlins. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. all, um, you know. My God. You know. And yeah. This is my assistant speaker. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Bobby from Bobby's World. And he's like, you know, three effing jobs, one effing voice, you know. And I'm like, I never even thought about that. And as a kid, I I'm know. like, well, that's pretty cool. But, um, it, that's what I want to do. One voice and get three checks. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal well, situation. It, yeah, it's that's that's certainly a uh uh bucket list item to be able to do something like that. And mm. I've got a pretty good ear now to when I hear commercials, I'll hear somebody and go, Is that so and so? Or, you know, is that especially certain celebrities that just have kind of a generic, you know, like John Hamm. Doesn't mm-hmm. have a distinctive voice. You just, it's just a voice. It's a nice, pleasant voice. Yeah. And you listen to it and you're like, is that, is that John Hamm? Or is that John Cena doing commercials for Honda or whoever it is? And, and I'll hear voices and go, oh, that's the same guy who does the, you know, whatever voice. And I always grew up doing imitations because I would see things over and over again. See, see cartoons over again or commercials or whatever it is. And I would, become to you would just start copying mm-hmm. you know whatever was on there and movie lines or something like that and and 
people quote movie lines, a lot of times I think one of my bad qualities is if somebody quotes a movie line and it's wrong or they get a word wrong or an inflection wrong, I'm like, that's not how he does it. He does it like this, and I have to correct him, and they get all mad at me. And it's like, well, I've seen the movie a lot more than you have because I have less of a life than you do. So <laughs> give me this, please. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of like, that's not what it is. I keep it to myself, but I, I definitely... Right. And I'm pro- I'm guilty of it too. I know there's movies I try to quote and I misquote, and somebody corrects me, and I'm like, "No, it's not. I had it right." <laughs> but, I know. Let me go watch that real quick. Hang on. All right, fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll call, we'll call it even. <laughs> yeah, but still. But all right, buddy. I'm. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm sure you got some stuff to get around to today. But uh, I don't know if you sent me anything. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> give me, give me by the end of the day. I'll probably have some more. Um, thevoicemonkey.com. If you need to book Mike for anything, um, he's quick, he's professional, um, always fun to work with. And Aww. um, I really appreciate you agreeing to come on and be the first guest on the inaugural show of. Booming in the booth is what we're rolling with, and uh, man, I I'm thank you. It's it's been a lot of fun. I'm I'm certainly honored to be able to set the bar low enough for everybody <laughs> else to go above it after me. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here. So yeah, <laughs> upwards is the only direction at this point. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But um, always a privilege, Mike. Uh, like thank like you have reached out to me personally in the last year. Offering a an, an ear or, you know, to talk if if I needed to, and that's another thing that I don't want to you know keep dragging on, but you and several other people like this is the first time we've like I said met face to face even though we're mm-hmm. you know doing this over, but the people I've met in this community, you guys have like become friends even like even if we haven't talked like this, like it's really awesome. And uh, I appreciate all the time you've reached out and checked in on me last year. And uh, you're a great guy. I appreciate it. And I hope we get to keep working together till we're old and gray or can say, sayonara, I'm retiring. <laughs> Grayer, I think is at yeah, the point. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man, thanks for being on here. And uh, we'll probably be working together in the next day or two again. Not. Okay. Live, Sounds but, great. Um, any, any parting words of wisdom or? You're right. It is a community. There are several people that I've met over the last couple of years that I've become pretty close to. Uh, VO Atlanta is next year. Uh, it's the last one. They're having it in person. And I know some people that are traveling here to Atlanta to, to come to it. Um, it it's, it's a lot of fun. You meet a ton of people. And everybody's so nice. I've rarely met anybody in this business who has just been like, I don't have time for you. Everybody, uh, Bob Bergen is one, does the voice of Porky Pig. Mm -hmm. He's huge in this industry. And I've talked to him several times and he's so nice. Everybody is, is, you know, Ron uh, uh, Paulson, Rob Paulson, uh, who does Yakko and all from the Animaniacs. He does a ton of stuff. He was supposed to be at, Vio Atlanta uh, last year. Yes, last year when it was canceled. Mm-hmm. And he's been super nice. All these people on Zoom that are giving their time uh, to help us out, uh, have seminars, have us read scripts for them and, and critique us. That's something that's it's unheard of in most any other business. I mean, if you're an actor, you're not going to have a Zoom meeting with Tom Cruise and be like, oh, no, no, let me read this script, Tom Cruise. And <laughs> yeah, no. and he tells you, you know, good or bad or what's, you know, critiques you on it. Here in this business, we've got people like Joe Cipriano, who is promo god, who I've, I've done Zoom stuff, you know, in a group with him. And he's so nice. They have so much time to give and they're, and they're not rushing off. And, and if you've got audio you have question about, I have... A dozen people I could send it to and go, can you listen to this and tell me what's wrong? Or I've got a buzz or I've got a, you know, something going on. Mm-hmm. I can reach out to people in the community and they help you out. Nobody's like, Ugh, I don't have time. Go away. Yeah. They're all so giving 
And I'm blessed to be part of this community. It's... And I try to give back. That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. It's like you ask people for help, you help people. Yeah. You know, just to be somebody who takes is you got to be somebody who gives as well. Yeah. I um, like I don't I don't even feel like I know what I'm doing. But I can't tell you how many hours I've spent with a couple of people trying to help them get their, you know, stuff tuned in and sounding good and whatever. And I've had help along the way. So, yeah, give it back is is definitely something this community has done. And uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you give good and good things happen to you. Yeah. I mean, that's just if you're a jerk to everybody, nobody wants to deal with you. No. So why not be nice? Yeah. Well, it doesn't cost you anything. Be nice. Exit. That's the best parting words I could think of for the day. Be nice. <laughs> so uh, appreciate it again. We'll wrap this up and uh, hopefully, hopefully we continue and we'll do it again sometime. Sounds great, man. Good luck with the podcast. All right. Thanks, buddy.